Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Tuesday, the 26th of April. Let's take a deep breath as we begin with our opening chant. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. I will chant the Christ our Passover, as we've done before which is a collection of verses taken from 1 Corinthians and Romans. The spirit of this, of course, is deep joy. So I would encourage you to take a moment and to get in touch with your joy, your joy in life, your joy in God, and listen anew to the words, the remarkable things that we are saying that I am chanting here about resurrection. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ being raised from the dead will never die again, death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia! Psalm number 5, written by David, crying out to God for protection from those who lie against he and his kingship. I think the psalm is particularly helpful for those who are in public office who experience being lied against, slandered uh, time and time again. You don't have to be in public office for this to happen, though. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, and evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies, the bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Let us pray source of all justice and goodness. You hate deception and evil. Lead us in the paths of righteousness, and keep us from falling into sin, that we may sing out our joy in Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we begin our readings in the first letter of Peter. A little introduction to you in the letter. The first letter from Peter was addressed to Christians here called God's chosen people. 
who were scattered throughout the northern part of Asia Minor. You'll hear the cities listed, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Bithynia. The main purpose of the letter is to encourage the readers who were facing persecution and suffering for their faith. The writer does this by reminding his readers of the good news about Jesus Christ, whose death, resurrection, and promise coming gave them hope. In the light of this, they are to accept and endure their suffering, confident that it is a test of the genuineness of their faith and that they will be rewarded on, quote, the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. Along with his encouragement in time of trouble, the writer also urges his readers to live as people who belong to Christ. You can tell from that introduction from the Good News translation that there is some controversy whether this was actually uh, St. Peter writing or if someone wrote using his name, which was not considered fraud in the ancient world, but rather a tribute to the one to whom the letter was attributed. Verses 1 to 12. From Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's chosen people who live as refugees scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. You were chosen according to the purpose of God the Father, and were made a holy people by His Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be purified by His blood. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of his great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from death. This fills us with a living hope, and so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. God keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. They are for you, who through faith are kept safe by God's power for the salvation which is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many kinds of trials you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, which can be destroyed, is tested by fire. And so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must be tested, so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. You love him, although you have not seen him, and you believe in him, although you do not now see him. So you rejoice with a great and glorious joy, which words cannot express because you are receiving the salvation of your souls, which is the purpose of your faith in him. It was concerning this salvation that the prophets made careful search and investigation, and they prophesied about this gift which God would give you. They tried to find out when the time would be and how it would come. This was the time to which Christ's Spirit in them was pointing, in predicting the sufferings that Christ would endure and the glory that would follow. God revealed to these prophets that their work was not for their own benefit but for yours, as they spoke about those things which you have now heard from the messengers who announced the good news by the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. These are things which even the angels would like to understand. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From this very rich and pregnant text, I'll just pull a few thoughts around joy. Joy really is often a fruit of our meditation. We may wake up feeling happy, we may wake up feeling discouraged, but we can grow in joy as we meditate upon the blessings which have come to us through Christ. First, we can meditate upon and give thanks that Christ is at work in us, saving us as a process. Peter says, because you are receiving the salvation of your souls. That's an ongoing daily process. Be encouraged. Paul says, be glad about this, that Christ is at work, alive in us, transforming us, renewing us, building us up in hope day by day. Peter calls this a living hope not a static hope, 
but a living hope which grows and responds in daily circumstances. Feeding our hope is connected to meditating upon the blessings that have come and the joy that arises in our hearts. We can find joy in the fact that Christ is giving us new life. This is the life of joyful discipleship, of abundance, of joy pressed down, full measure, overflowing. Imagine if somebody gave you a kilo of gold. Wouldn't you be full of joy? We are told in the scriptures that our faith, this gift given to us, is even more precious than gold. Reflect for a moment on your faith. What a gift our faith is. What treasures it opens for us. Living hope and a great and glorious joy. This gift of Christ was foretold by the prophets, but not for themselves, but for you, Peter says. The prophets were working for you in ancient times. Let us give thanks. And lastly, even angels would love to inquire into the mysteries of new life in Jesus Christ, the promise of life eternal. Your faith is something even angels would desire to know. Isn't that remarkable? Friends, let us together meditate on these wonderful gifts given to us. Thanks be to God and find true joy. Amen. Please respond to the prompt. We pray to the Creator with Hear Our Prayer. Let's take a moment's quiet. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Savior may fill us and our friends and family and our church with the joy of the glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray for our friends in the Orthodox tradition who celebrated Easter yesterday, and especially the church in Ukraine under attack. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer, that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in true Christian love. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer, that God may provide for those who lack food, work, shelter, or security. We especially pray for refugee families, for Maha's family, Hanadi and Zaki. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer that by God's power, war, famine, and pestilence may cease throughout all the world. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer, that God may reveal the light of the divine healing power to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. Today we consider Madeline, Ricardo, Richard, Irene, Keith, Joan, Michael, Gail, Rose, Laura. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer. We pray that according to God's promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer, that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon God's people so that we may bear faithful witness to Christ's resurrection. We especially pray for former Bishop Mark MacDonald, his family, for all who are grieving, for all who have been wounded by these sins, especially for the victim, for the ongoing ministry of the Church, for our indigenous sisters and brothers. We pray to the Creator, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Alleluia. And now the blessing, God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life, and the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier be upon you and yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today.